Hello, I'm Mercedes Stevenson, and this is The West Block, politics, perspectives, and players. It's a breakup of epic political proportions. Former Attorney General Jody Wilson-Raybould has resigned from Cabinet amid allegations the Prime Minister's office pressured her to help SNC-Lavalin avoid criminal prosecution over corruption and fraud charges. Trudeau says that Wilson-Raybould's departure left him puzzled because he insists she never told him that she thought the government wasn't doing the right thing or that she was under pressure. Jody Wilson-Raybould has yet to speak and Canadians are left wondering who to believe and what really happened. Joining me now as we unpack what's at stake here for democracy is Duff Conacher, co-founder of Democracy Watch. Uh, Duff, it's been almost a week since this story broke. It just keeps, seems to keep evolving and changing and becoming more and more dramatic every day. What do you make of the public allegations? We don't know if any of them are true, but what we've heard at this point. Uh, well, it raises a lot of questions, of course. It's very serious. It's a violation, I think, clearly of the uh, federal ethics law, the Conflict of Interest Act, if anyone in the PMO did pressure her and try to influence uh, the former uh, Attorney General's what decision. What part of the act would that be? Because I know we keep talking about, is it criminal? Is it ethics? What part of the act would that possibly violate? It's Section 9, and it says you can't use your position to do, even try to influence another person's dis decision to improperly further a person or businesses or organization's interests. And it would obviously be SNC Lavalin's interest in having the prosecution dropped. And it's improper because there is case law from court rulings that say that uh, no one is supposed to be influencing the Attorney General's decisions about prosecutions, especially in a case like this where you have uh, a history of donations from SNC Lavalin to the Liberal Party. And uh, the Attorney General properly can actually intervene and stop a prosecution, but is only supposed to do so publicly and not under any pressure from anyone. What about when Liberals say, and they, they won't say this necessarily so much on the record, but they say it on background to journalists, look, if we'd done this, we would have had to make it public. It would have had to be published in the Canada Gazette. So why is there all of this implication that we did something wrong? We would have had to reveal it in the end anyhow. It couldn't have been a secret. Because there is this constitutional principle in terms of law enforcement and the Attorney General's role in it, and it says right in the Prime Minister's guide, uh, opening an accountable government guide for the Cabinet, that the Attorney General cannot be influenced or pressured by anyone else uh, in the Cabinet, and especially not by staff, if, if they were the ones who uh, did it and the allegations are true, staff of the Prime Minister's office. It's proper for Cabinet to have discussions with her and provide information about the implications of a prosecution, but when it comes to pressure, it means that then they're trying to politically influence the decision about a prosecution. And that decision is only supposed to be made on the law and the evidence, uh, not based on politics. How serious do you think these allegations are? Well, some have said it actually comes up uh, to the point of obstruction of justice, which is a crime. So uh, I would not be surprised at all if the RCMP is examining that. Um, it's rather unprecedented as a case. and so. We need, we would know exactly where the line is and there may be that the lawyers at the RCMP will decide that charges are warranted after, their, after an investigation. So that's obviously very serious if someone in the Prime Minister's office committed a crime. Also very serious and I think it's clear the Conflict of Interest Act was violated if someone actually did this and that's one of the most important laws for maintaining democratic good government in Canada. So obviously serious to be violating that law as well. The case is now with the Ethics Commissioner Duff and the government uh, MPs, the Liberal MPs are saying, look, that's the proper place for it to be. We don't need to do this at a committee. The opposition members would like the Justice Committee to investigate. What do you think the proper venue is here to find out if any rules were broken or ethics breached? Well, one of the big things that this whole situation raises is how tainted investigations of these situations are at the federal level and law enforcement overall, tainted by politics. The Ethics Commissioner should be fully independent, but actually was chosen through a very secretive, suspicious process by the Trudeau Cabinet, through a completely Cabinet-controlled process. So Democracy Watch's position is there's an appearance of bias there because of how the Ethics Commissioner was chosen. And we are calling on uh, him, Mario Dion, uh, the Ethics Commissioner, to refer it to a Provincial Ethics Commissioner who has no ties to any federal party or uh, and uh, to the federal government. And that would be much more independent than him looking into it. Has there ever been a case like this before? I mean, there's there's been scandals, there's been controversies, but this particular allegation that the Prime Minister's office was leaning on an Attorney General to get involved in a prosecution in some way. 
No, the, the Public Prosecution Service was created by the Harper Conservatives in 2006, and it's supposed to be more independent from the Cabinet than the Attorney General. Before that, the Attorney General did make prosecution decisions. Uh, what was strange was that the Harper Conservatives created this prosecution service and said, we need this to protect prosecutions from political interference. However, we'll put in the rules that the Attorney General can step in and stop a prosecution. And they shouldn't have done that, because if you want independent decisions about prosecutions, don't allow a politician to step in and intervene. Uh, they allowed it, and that's why this whole situation has been raised. But the PMO should have known to stay away from this, because there have been court rulings in the past about lack of independence of an Attorney General. Uh, this is an unprecedented, unprecedented situation exactly, but there are, have been similar situations in the past. And uh, we, uh, they should have just stayed away from it because they know how clear the rule is. You've seen a lot of allegations of ethics breaches in your time. Where do you think this one ranks in terms of seriousness? I think it's very, very serious. It ranks near the top because it involves protecting a big business who has made d um, lots of donations to the Liberal Party in the past was actually found guilty of, uh, after corporate and union donations were banned, funneling donations through their executives, continuing to funnel them to the Liberal Party from 2004 to 2011. And it it's also involves intervening to do this company a favor by trying to stop a prosecution for after that company has committed uh, bribery in more than one country. So I think that's something that will turn off a lot of Canadians, that this big company possibly because of the donations, is getting this favor from the Prime Minister's office. Do you think the Justice Committee is going to be able to get to the bottom of this? No. Democracy Watch's position is that it's uh, not a good idea for a committee of MPs, all of whom are partisan, to be trying to investigate a situation involving uh, the Prime Minister and the Prime Minister's office, which comes from the ruling party. When politicians are investigating, judging each other, that's a kangaroo court by definition. They all try to appear objective, but there are questions you can see here always. They're tainted by their partisanship. The opposition parties want an open hearing because they know it'll be a show and they'll be able to get lots of news. And the Liberals want to shut it down because uh, they're claiming it's a witch hunt. It wouldn't be a, a witch hunt, but it would be partisan in a kangaroo court. And it's just a bad idea. We need a fully independent inquiry and investigation. The RCMP is best position to do that and hopefully they are investigating. The ethics commissioner is tainted, hopefully we'll refer it to a provincial ethics commissioner and that's about all we have right now. Uh, we need lots of changes to ensure that this doesn't happen again and if it does there will be an independent investigation. If the allegations are true or even the perception of them are true, how serious are the consequences of that in terms of democracy and an independent uh, law enforcement and judicial system? Uh, very serious, and it's just a bad idea across Canada that we allow the Attorney General to be a politician and a member of Cabinet. You know, Jody Wilson-Raybould, assuming she was pressured and the allegations are true, she's in a very bad position. She's sitting there saying, I'm a Liberal, I'm a Cabinet Minister. Obviously she wants to stay in Cabinet, otherwise she wouldn't have accepted the position in the first place. And yet she's supposed to uphold the law and ensure the integrity of the law enforcement system. And so she's in a conflict of interest. And, and all the Attorney Generals across the country are in the same position because they're also all members of cabinets. Other countries don't do this. The United Kingdom doesn't do this. And we should stop it as well. And this situation so, will so hopefully result General in that change. So is, is actually outside of cabinet and separate? Outside of cabinet. And we should have someone who is appointed by a fully independent committee with no members from federal parties at all or the government on that committee. And uh, we should match essentially the, the Ontario system for appointing judges. And that's how all these appointments of all these watchdogs should be made. By an independent committee, they come up with a short list of qualified people and they send it to the government and the government has to choose from the short list. And that person should be totally removed from uh, politics from all the parties. And until we have that system, everyone should question the integrity of law enforcement in our country, especially when it comes to laws that apply to federal politicians. That's all the time we have for today, but thank you so much for joining us, Steph. I'm Mercedes Stevenson for The West Block. We'll see you next week.